Joining me to discuss all of these issues is Andy Meyer, the Chief Operating Officer at the Institute of Economic Affairs. Welcome to the programme, Andy. Uh, this has been a long time coming. The British policy with regard to fracking has been backwards and forwards, bans, review after review. Is this one really going to be the final one? Well, fingers crossed. We don't know for certain because the review itself is quite narrow in scope and is focused on something that doesn't really matter very much, which is the science around seismology, which is already very well known and is not really amenable to new technology, contrary to what the terms of the review say, but is amenable to a more sensible, proportionate and fair regulatory system that treats fracking like any other extractive industry, mm. most notably construction, where there are rules in place about what sort of vibrations are allowed on the surface which, if that were applied to fracking, would have seen it not banned in the first place. So the moratorium was brought in in 2019, mainly off the back of the concerns about seismology. But there have been a number of uh, investigations already, a number of scientific reports into the kind of uh, earthquakes, for want of a better term, that come about from fracking. And they're pretty low. They're extremely low. And to put this in context, the expression that's often used is a ladder falling over could stop drilling for 18 hours. And what got the entire industry banned was a tremor on the surface. It was about half of that which would be considered perfectly safe for construction work. So it was a nonsense. I mean, the real reason it was banned is because Conservatives do not like dealing with vocal local protests. It's a NIMBY campaign that got it banned, along with a lot of scaremongering around the environmental impacts that we just know are not true because of the safe operation of the industry in the United States. So there are levels of seismology that are currently making fracking banned in the UK. And, and are there restrictions on seismic uh, events uh, when it comes to construction? Is that, is that set at a different level then? It's set at a different level using a different system. So what was used for fracking is the Richter scale that everybody knows is the scale used for measuring earthquakes, which immediately puts it on a par with very scary things. What they use for construction is surface movement. So I believe it's 15 millimetres per second movement on the surface. Things going back and forth is considered to be the acceptable limit. And then obviously the unsafe limits are much higher. And fracking never came near that. I mean, you are more likely to experience a natural earth tremor in the United Kingdom at the higher levels than you are from fracking operations. Now, it's not, you know, clearly, they need to have some restrictions there. You can't just have a free-for-all. Mm. But in this case, the government panicked and responded really to the headlines around fracking, not to what would actually make the industry operate safely, which the experts say it can do. It is remarkable. I think I've seen two reviews in the last uh, three years or so. This will be the third since that moratorium came in. And they're all basically saying the same thing. It seems that the, the politics and the science have become rather divorced on this issue. But if we get back to the practicalities of the matter, everyone's concerned about their bills this year. It's clearly going to be a very tough 12 months going ahead. Fracking, even if we got going uh, at the conclusion of this review in three months' time, it's not going to do anything for bills next winter, is it? Not for this winter, no. I mean, you can get the drills that are, sorry, the wells that are already in place opened up within a year. New wells could also open up fairly quickly. The government's own figures on timelines is about a year. After that, you've got about 20 years where each well will be fully operational and delivering gas into either trucks or into local pipelines if they exist. So you will have an impact on prices in the medium term. In the short term, it's got to be import substitution, so existing operations. So that's what the government has been doing, going around the world trying to do deals with countries that are not Russia. Which hasn't really been that successful. The Prime Minister had a, a big visit to Saudi Arabia, to the UAE, didn't really come home with anything. Uh, are we re is there any solution, therefore, to what we're facing over the next 12 months? Well, the hope is that when countries like Saudi Arabia have finished going through what they're doing now, which is telling the West, you know, you haven't been very nice to us, with good reason, um, so we're going to make life difficult for you. Uh, they will actually increase supply because it's in their interest, ultimately. These are huge revenues that they can make for the next year or two from the higher prices of oil and gas. So it's in their interest. It's in our interest. Um, and possibly things will happen in Russia that means that Russia at, one, at some point can be invited back into the family of civilised nations. But that's not right now. And we really hope that the European Union does something about that. It's a bleak picture. Uh, one of the criticisms of the move to exploit more of our own natural shale gas, other than, of course, it's a hydrocarbon and we're not supposed to like those very much anymore, um, is the fact that this would 
play into the European market. It wouldn't all be reserved for Britain. It might only have a marginal impact on prices given the levels that we'd be uh, extracting. Unlike in America, where most of the gas they extract really does affect their price, and it's mm -hmm. much, much lower prices in the States because they've been doing this for so long. Um, with us, most of our gas will be exported, would it not? Yes, there is something in that, but it's not entirely true. So a lot of the gas that can be fracked domestically can be put directly into the grid without refining. So that presumably would be sold here because that would be by far the cheapest thing to do. Um, but it's not just a price issue. The big difference with domestic fracking versus imports is clearly we can tax domestic supply here at the well and mm. if it's sold here. Whereas if we're importing, then we're paying for things like Russian tanks. And if we're putting things into the European grid, we're helping countries like Germany avoid paying money to the Russians. So it's really important for European security as well as domestic security and helping the British economy. That's a really fascinating answer. I haven't heard that quite put like that before. Andy Meyer, thank you so much for coming in and explaining those issues there.